Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to do the burning logo effect. It's going to look a little bit like this. So this procedure is going to take the use of fusion and we're going to get in depth in how to use this, but it's really pretty simple to put together if you know how to do it, but I will show you the steps. Hey, and if you're looking for a pre-made template that you can drag and drop right onto your own images, I'll tell you a little bit later in this video on how to get that. We want to start with a fusion composition. In this case, I've got one that's about eight seconds here. And to get to that, you go to your effects library under effects here. There's a fusion composition. You just drag that onto your timeline there. So once you get that in place and drag that out to the length you want it, we're going to just hit this fusion button down at the bottom. Okay, so all we have here, here's our media in. And the way we get media is you can take it right from your hard drive and you can drag it and drop it onto the flow area if you'd like. Or if you've already got it in your media pool, you can drag it and drop it down from here my case, I already have it in place here. And so you're going to need to replace this node into this node structure and make these connections back in place. And there's also some settings in this media that you're going to need to set. And I'll get to that in just a second. The first thing that we want to do, we want to put an effect mask into this media. And I'm using a fast noise and I'll show you what that looks like in the upper left. So I have a few different settings on this. I've given it some more detail. I've bumped that up to about 14. And I've slightly adjusted the contrast up to about 1.57 just to make that a little bit sharper. You can see it's very cloudy there, or we can go up a little bit more here. I'm keeping the center the same. The brightness, I want to turn that down so it's not so it's not affecting it quite so sharply. It's kind of going to be a faded effect. And the scale, you can set what you want. But I like the look of about just under 7. To me, that looked pretty good. I put a little bit of an angle on there. You can do what you want. And that just seemed to make a lot of sense to me where that was at. I'm not applying any seethe or any animation to this because I don't want these locations that are burning to move around while it's burning. But I do want to hit these two buttons and I'll show you what they do. So discontinuous, it kind of does make it a little bit edgier here. You can see how soft and cloudy and pillowy that looks. With discontinuous, it makes it a little bit sharper. And I'm inverting that to kind of give it that caustic look. And I think that looks a little bit better. So let's go over here to the next node. It is the, or the next tab. It's the color tab. I'm keeping everything the way it is. In my case, it's going to be a no alpha black. So that's going to be these no alpha areas. And then just the white areas. And everything else I'm keeping the same here. I'm not applying any masking into this. You can see my mask node is empty there. So when we start, it's going to just look like this basically the logo. I'm using the DaVinci Resolve logo. You can use whatever you want here, like I said. You're going to get this setting when you pop up. If you want to loop it here, just select that. What we want to do is we want to apply these masks. So in my case, I want to apply the mask inverted, and I want to multiply by a mask. You need to make sure that both of these are selected. We want to fit the mask by a crop, and that's just the location. It's going to crop it just to this circle. And then on a channel, we want to select this. It's going to be probably alpha by default. I'm going to use the luminance here. And we need to do some animation on this channel itself. And I've already set these animation points. You can see it sliding there. So a couple of important things. Just turn off the white. You don't need that. We do need to clip the black, though. We want to slide this over all the way to the right to start. And the more spread that you have, and I'll, I'll show you this here. Let me turn off the glow real quick. Okay, so the more spread that you have, you're going to get more and more of the black to kind of show up here. You can see I'm getting more black there if you look at the final render. And I'm going to undo that. I want to take away that keyframe. We want to start... And I'm going to start pretty close to the start here. We want to start over to the right because if I'm over here, it's going to start taking away our image. So I want to be over on this side. Like I said, if the spread is going to give you more of that black to start. The important thing is, though, you can see it goes from 0 to 1 by default, right? So over here, you can see I set a keyframe here, and this is a negative number. So to get rid of this completely, we need to make sure you'll have to go in here and enter this number. So you just 
click this box, delete it, and you type in negative one. And that way you can get to a lower value for this luminance. So you want to be below zero or you're not going to get rid of your full uh, image here. In my case, I'm going through negative one, so I can do that. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a couple keyframes in here. I can just show you the editor. So we're just basically, I'm using a linear keyframe mode here. Um, if you want to put in some curves in there and mess with that, you can. I thought it looked pretty natural just by using the basically linear curves here. And so I have a couple points. And so we're going to get kind of burning up to about two thirds. And then I'm going to really make that last piece kind of slow. That's why I have those two keyframes in there. Let me get rid of that. And so you can see how it does that. It goes to there. So there's my first key point. And then it goes from all the way to there to get rid of the rest of that. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do is detect edges. And there is an add-on in here. It's called Edge Detect. It's one of the Resolve FX settings. Uh, stylize. And it's called Edge Detect here. It doesn't really do what I want to do. In this case, I just want to pick up these edges and I want to do damage to them. So I'm applying two effects and I'm using color generators to do that. So the first one that I'm applying is a burnt look, kind of that black look, and that's this one. This one is kind of that glowing edge as it's burning away. And so I have this one off. We'll just start with the black one first. So what I need to do is enter in the input from the media, which is showing that fast noise masked logo coming in here into the color source and I need to do it also in the effect mask so I'm using the same image and so if we click on that obviously there's nothing there because I'm using just a black uh, you can set a different burn color here if you want so if you wanted to set a yellow burn color you do it there I'm using a black and so these settings I need to multiply by my mask there and I'm gonna crop again and I'm looking just for the alpha there and as you can see, I'm not doing any animation on these channels here, but I am going to clip the black. And so that gives you that burning edge. You can see it black there. So it kind of turns black before you get the glowing edge. And then we want to go down into a merge. Uh, we want to merge that with the original image. So that's my first merge. So the original image is on the background. And then I'm putting this burning, uh, kind of these burn marks up on top. So we can see those. So that goes in the foreground. So going back to the color generator, I'll turn that back on. This edge, this one took me a little bit longer to figure out how to do, but I'm doing the same thing. And actually I found about four ways to do this, to, to create these edges. And to me, this was the most efficient using this color generator and I can control the color a lot easier. In this case, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking the output from the media end into the color source and into the mask. And so you can see I've adjusted the color. This is going to be brighter by the way I'm bringing it in. So I had to take it more to a brown. If I took it up to here, it's to me it's just too bright. So I had to mute that a little bit somewhere in there. And what I'm doing on this one is I'm multiplying by the mask again, cropping it, and I'm just adjusting the alpha. And I want to clip both the black and white in this case not doing any animation again. So this one's pretty simple. It runs really fast. And then I need to take that out because what my source looks like is something like this. And that really isn't something I want to overlay my image with, but there's a cool little filter and we can select what we want to do with it. Obviously there's all these settings, but the Sobel filter is awesome. Took that image here actually. So this is the original image on the right, and then this is the final filtered image on the left. And you can see I get that nice burning edge. And then obviously I want to make that glow a little bit because that's kind of on fire. And so I use a really soft, soft glow. I'm taking my gain down a bit and I'm taking my glow size down a bit. And one thing I did do here is you can see it. Let's go through. You can see my gain is adjusting because as something's burning, it's going to be kind of dynamic, the glow is. And so what I wanted to do to get that 
uh, dynamic action of that glow is put a modifier on here. And what I did is I just use a perturb. And so you can set the range that the perturb is affecting. In this case, I'm just over 0.5. I didn't adjust the strength or seed. You can make it really pulse if you want to. You can turn these things up or change that value. But I'm pretty low here to start. And you can see it's kind of filtering through up and down with the gain. So that makes it kind of pulse a little bit with that that glowing edge so it's not so static looking and then so again out from this merge I go in right into another merge so this image with that black on top goes into the bottom and then this this burning edge is going to be on the very top and that's in the foreground and that's it it goes right into the output there it took me a little while to figure a couple of these things out I'm working on a different video and I've actually got it done it's a fire text and it kind of has a fire texture that you can apply to text and I wanted to get kind of a burning effect at the end and I had one I wasn't really happy with it so I spent a little bit more time and made some adjustments made it a little more efficient reduced some nodes that one will be coming out soon but basically Basically, it's going to have this effect at the end with a fire texture in the text itself. So this is cool because you can use it for logos like I showed you in this video. You can use it for images. You can use it for text. You can use it for photos of your ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, whatever you want to use it for. I did mention earlier that I did develop a template. I did make one for some standard frame rates, 24 frames a second, 30 and 60 frames a second. And you can get that by visiting my website, digitalvectorstudios.com. Look for the link down in the description. And it's all pre-made. It's got some options for different settings. And you can easily load the files right from the template. So it's super easy to use. And it'll all be done for you. So if you had trouble following along or you just want to get it and save yourself some time, grab it there. So that one's available for only 3 bucks, And you can grab that. That's really cheap. Basically, you're helping cover the cost of my bandwidth for some of these downloads. Just support the channel a little bit. If you're another YouTuber out there, please don't copy this and post it on your website or offer this to others. I took a lot of time to develop this. Hopefully, you can respect that. And for those of you guys who are creators and you're looking to create videos for YouTube, no problem. You can use this however you want and just don't sell it. You can sell your output from it, but don't sell the actual template. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions on any part of what I covered today. Post them in the comments below. If you have any requests, go ahead and post those as well. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate that. Take care, everybody.